Well, hi everyone, this is Frank, and welcome to my wood shop. Um, I had a friend of mine uh, ask me to uh, build a unique piece for him. Uh, this is a, a piece of art, as I call it, uh, something that's uh, a little different uh, out of my scope of what I normally do, um, but you know, uh, it was actually kind of fun to build. Um, and now that I have it done, and my client's going to pick it up uh, today, um, my wife is now saying that she would like one. <laughs> and as I told her, she's going to have to get in line. So um, there's roughly 11 different species of wood uh, that it, it basically compiles this um, a contemporary art. And uh, if you'd like to see uh, how this was made, uh, please stay tuned to the video and um, I'm going to go through the process of uh, selecting the wood, uh, cutting it, milling it, and uh, placing it down in its uh, location for kind of a, a freestyle uh, art uh, sculpture. And um, then we'll go ahead and sand it. Uh, I did an oil finish and, the, uh, and then went through the process of assembly, which was actually uh, quite interesting. A little difficult to do it as one person. So anyway, stay tuned to the video and uh, we'll show you how I made this. Well, the first thing I'm doing now is starting to mill up some of the bacote. Taking some uh, edging on this board right now just to get a nice clean edge. Now I'm ripping down the pieces of the bacote, which is going to be the uh, back frame that holds the whole piece of art together. Here I'm cutting up some of the vertical strips that will attach to the bacote. Um, these are actually padauk. Here, this is a, a piece of cherry uh, that I've had for, oh my goodness, probably 15 years, if not longer. It's uh, a curly cherry. Uh, it's really it's got a lot of nice burl at that very tip of the board. Now I'm going to put the flip side of that cherry uh, through my planer, my thickness planer, so I can get the right thickness that I want for the, uh, for the piece. Now this is a board of um, the wormy maple. And I'm going to be cutting three pieces of this board, uh, which is going to actually be the start of the design. Now that I've got the bacote uh, cut and the paduke for the horizontal and vertical strips, uh, which is the, like I said, the backbone of the, of the piece, I'm going to lay out the uh, three pieces of wormy maple and try to get some of the design. Here, this is a uh, piece of uh, Osage orange. Uh, it's a beautiful wood. It's an exotic wood. Um, it is very, very dense, very hard. Um, but it was actually um, 
kind of nice to work with in, in milling and cutting. Now that I've got those two pieces cut, I'm going to see where they best fit in the uh, design. That looks pretty good. Uh, this is a, a piece of walnut um, that I've had for, I think, probably close to 30 years. Um, it's pretty well dry. Um, and I decided to uh, cut this board in half to try to get bookends um, to uh, put on the two ends of the uh, of this uh, artwork. Um, it's the thinnest piece of wood um, that's in the piece itself. Everything else is uh, tends to be three quarter inch or one inch. Uh, these will uh, I think they ended up of being about a half an inch. And there's what the book match looks like. Now I'm on to sawing up the red oak. Uh, this is a four quarter piece. It's just a little bit bigger than four quarter. Uh, this is the piece of lace wood. Again, a very uh, beautiful exotic wood. Uh, very, very dense and hard. Um, but it has a very, very uh, unique grain pattern. It also uh, can splinter um, easily. Um, and it's uh, if you handle the wood uh, along the rough edges, you definitely get splinters. <laughs> Uh, this is a piece of Wenge that I had uh, in my uh, wood pile for uh, I think about 10 years and uh, perfect time to go ahead and use it for this uh, for this art. Here I went and uh, had to cut four, I'm sorry, five different pieces uh, for this design. Uh, this is a four-quarter um, piece of rough sawn purple heart. I uh, definitely had to, uh, I had actually had to purchase this piece because I didn't have any purple heart in my inventory. Uh, and actually, it's the first time I've ever worked with purple heart. Um, it was actually milled up pretty nice. 
I, I learned that um, it may be dark initially, but when you mill it up, it gets light. Uh, but over time, it darkens up, very similar to what Paduk does. All right, this is a piece of a Shadua that I've had in inventory for a project that uh, I ended up not doing. Um, it's I've got a very unique uh, tigerish type of pattern to it. It was actually a nice uh, piece of wood to uh, to work with. It is a hardwood, a very dense hardwood as well. Uh, this is a piece of four-quarter uh, Paduk, uh, one of my favorite hardwoods, hardwoods to, uh, to work with. This is another piece of um, Wenge. It's a little darker than the previous piece I worked with. Uh, this is where I used um, uh, the darker piece in the middle of the wormy maple as a backdrop to the triangle piece, which you'll, you'll see in the design. Here I'm cutting up the, uh, the cherry, um, the curly cherry. And that looks like a pretty good spot for those two pieces. Now comes a fun part of sanding. So now um, I sanded not only the top and bottom of every board, but I also um, did like a, uh, a sanded chamfer on all the edges of the board. Um, so um, it took a while to get all the sanding completed. Uh, I actually did it started off with 120 and then 220 grit sandpaper um, so each piece got us uh, two passes Here I'm using some tack cloth just to wipe the boards down. Um, use tack cloth to get the sawdust off the boards before you finish them. So um, uh, it doesn't take too long to, uh, to get that done. I think it took me one Christmas song. Um, now this is an oil-based uh, uh, finish that I'm using. Uh, it is a, a tongue oil. And uh, man, it just uh, makes these exotic woods pop. As you can see on that uh, lace wood, um, boy, it really darkened up. Now, I did put the oil finish on all four sides. Uh, I used a brush to get it on to soak it, and then I used a, uh, a cloth to 
wipe off the excess. So I'm always showing in the video uh, the top side of each board just so you can see the change in color um, when you add the oil finish to it. Uh, here's the finished selection of the woods that have been uh, completed with uh, sanding and um, using the oil finish on them. And uh, I let them dry for about 48 hours to let them really cure, uh, uh, cure on the inside. Now's the time to start the assembly. Now, as you can tell, it's Christmas time with the Christmas music playing in the background. Uh, it took a long time uh, to do the assembly process because um, everything is dimensionally correct. Uh, it, it, I had to make sure I measured in every location to make sure it was the same on all four sides as you can see me doing right now with the Bacot and the Paduk. But even when I get the other pieces on, I have a, a lot of measuring to do that um, I cut out of the video. Of course, I used uh, my woodpecker square there to uh, square it up and make sure that's nice and square before I um, screwed in the other pieces of paduk. You'll see um, in one of the videos where I'm drilling into the back of that bacote, and that bacote is so hard that as I drilled with the uh, uh, drill, it would come out smoking. Here I'm mixing up some two-part epoxy. Um, these small pieces of Wenge, uh, there's no way that I could attach those uh, from the back with a screw because they would split, and there was no way I was going to use any kind of brad nails on them. So. I used a, um, I think it's a, uh, a 50 minute setting epoxy, so it's a long work time. And um, I just applied epoxy to the back of, of these pieces of Wenge. And uh, I already had a, a slight, really slight marks on the pieces of uh, curly maple in order to know exactly where to uh, make the placement. So uh, the epoxy, I did several tests using epoxy or CA glue to see which one would um, work better. And uh, I let them cure for a day uh, on some sample pieces uh, that were uh, finished with oil. And then I beat them with a hammer and boy, the epoxy won. <laughs> it never came apart. So I learned that epoxy is excellent to use on uh, pre-finished, uh, oil-finished wood. Uh, here I uh, decided to clamp on um, the pieces of Wenge onto that wormy maple uh, using my clamps. Here, um, since they're both um, wet with epoxy, it was going to be too difficult to try to, to put a clamp on that, so I just put some weight on it, my, my tape holder that I had. Now my little uh, gauge I'm using there is just a depth gauge. It's a, it's a cheap little depth gauge that I use often in the shop. Um, here's where I have to begin to um, position all of these pieces, making sure that they're square and they're in the same position uh, for each piece. Um, you'll see uh, in the middle of the uh, artwork, I've got a photograph there. Um, when I did the design um, and did it all loose, I actually went up onto a ladder and took a photograph of it uh, so that I would remember exactly where I, where I put each of the pieces so I could recreate it uh, in the assembly process.
All the holes that I'm drilling, uh, obviously, um, are pre-drilled. Um, there's no way I could just put a screw in, uh, especially into uh, that bacote. Um, so uh, everything I did was uh, pre-drilled. And you'll notice as you go along uh, in assembly, um, there I am again doing a lot of measuring, um, but you have to be careful where you put the screws. Uh, you cannot put them on opposing sides that would restrict uh, natural wood growth. If you did that, then the wood would split over time. So you have to make sure that you put the screws in uh, it, with the grain uh, when you're doing two screws side by side or top and bottom so that um, the wood has an opportunity to grow either way. And I'm not sure if you'll catch it in the video, but none of these pieces are attached to two separate pieces. Uh, they're only attached to the frame and uh, and or one piece they're never attached to two different pieces and again the reason for that is because of wood growth if you attach um, two pieces of wood or one piece of wood onto two pieces and screw it in well uh, when the wood grows naturally with humidity or shrinks when it gets to be dry in the winter um, the uh, wood will crack on you so uh, it was uh, critical to make sure that I only put the screws in the area um, where I allowed wood growth. I started using those Jorgensen clamps, but it got to be a pain putting those uh, um, um, pads on them. So I just got my Irwin clamps out, which are really handy and easy to use one-handed. So since I was doing this assembly pretty much by myself, it was easier to do it with the Irwin clamps. There you can see I'm only putting one screw in each top and bottom of that oak. That way it allows the uh, wood to grow um, a grain long. Of course, I had to measure um, each time that I would put those screws in because um, some of the wood that I used um, ended up being uh, three quarter inch. Some was just shy of three quarter. Some was a little bit over three quarter. And of course, the walnut was a half an inch. So I had to make sure that the screws that I selected to uh, attach to the frame uh, did not penetrate and come through uh, the front of the boards. So it was critical to make sure that I did that measurement and selected the correct screws. Good 
as you can see I'm going to be screwing this uh, cherry to the red oak and you can see it stands up a uh, proud above that piece of wormy maple probably about a oh three sixteenths of an inch uh, it's, it's pretty cool when you take a look at the finished piece from the front because it kind of makes it look like it's floating Here are the last pieces uh, on the corners of the red oak. I'm just doing some epoxy. Well, lastly, the, uh, the piece of art is done. And I was actually quite surprised on how well it turned out. Um, the uh, the oil finish was a, I think a good selection for it. It's a uh, gives it that matte finish, so you're basically concentrating on the wood coming out. And here's a legend that I put together for uh, my client, uh, which uh, gave them a description of each of the different woods, uh, because I know uh, if they put that up, people are going to be asking uh, what they are. So I hope you enjoyed the video.